Our next section is caloric expenditure. A very common topic for many of our clients because so many clients out there tend to find a personal trainer because they want to lose weight. We all know the first way to lose weight is to burn some calories. You can burn calories, but it's even more helpful if you know how many you are burning and how many you need. So, from a caloric expenditure point of view, the American College of Sports Medicine recommends that we burn 150 to 400 calories through physical activity every day. Now, when your body moves, we all know it needs energy. We learned that in exercise physiology because that's its type of work. Also, we are always using aerobic and anaerobic energy systems, which means we can burn carbohydrates and fats. Always burning both. But how hard we're working determines which fuel source we're relying on the most. Another, another fuel source tidbit is how long we're working determines which, which fuel source we're relying on as well. Now, we're going to look at total daily expenditure of our energy, TDEE, or you can just call it total energy expenditure. So what we're, what we're going to look at in, these next, in this next equation is your maintenance level. Now, when you refer to your maintenance level, you are not trying to lose weight. You are not trying to gain weight. This is an estimation, an estimation of what your body needs based on your lean body mass and your weight. So, depending on maintenance, you're looking at 15 to 16 calories per pound of body weight. Fat loss, it's a lesser number of calories per pound and to gain weight you need more calories because your body needs to be able to store energy to gain weight. Now in this example we are going to look at this 235 pound person's lean body mass. So the person weighs 235 pounds, 34% of their 235 pounds is fat mass. That means 155 pounds is lean body mass. So based on that number times what their goal is, we would figure out which, how many calories they needed per day. This person is trying to lose weight based on the number. Now, we just did uh, total daily energy expenditure. I'm going to go on to a very technical word, basal metabolic rate. This is something that can be measured in a clinical setting, but has equations associated, so you can, associated with it, so you can calculate it yourself. Now, in the Harris-Benedict formula, we're going to look at gender differences. Also, we're not going to look at the body composition, but the gender and the mass itself. In addition to their mass, we will also look at the height in centimeters and the age in years. So we've got it split up to really focus on the different types of body that, that a person could have. There are examples of this in your book. Also, the activity multiplier is in use in the Harris-Benedict formula. Because we have a set number, but then also, depending on how, how much movement someone does during the day, they may need more or less calories. Now, in the catch mcardle formula, we're going to take into account the basal metabol we're looking at the basal metabolic rate, but we're also including the activity multiplier, but we are looking at men and women, and we're no longer looking at their age. We are just looking at their lean body mass, so how much muscle, bone, organs, tissue that this person has 
on their body and then applying the activity factor. There's a lot of debate, especially in the past few years, because for so long for fat loss, it was suggested that you needed to work at a low intensity in order to burn fat. Well, working in, in a lower intensity, your proportion of fat burning versus carbohydrate burning favors fat more because if you remember from exercise physiology, that process is considerably longer. It's a, definitely an aerobic process and it yields more energy to be, um, to be used and that's broken down. But higher intensity has become a lot more popular in the, in the recent years. And I just want to use a quick equation or quick math to uh, show you the difference here. So if someone does low intensity exercise for 30 minutes, they may burn 240 calories and 41% of that is fat. So 98 calories, they burn 41% of their calories of, were fat. Now, in a second example, someone did 30 minutes of higher intensity activity. They, did, they burned 450 calories. Their fat percentage was considerably lower, it's 24%. What, 24% of 450 is 108 calories. So 10 more calories, just with a little bit more effort. They also worked their heart and lungs more and have helped to increase an after-workout burn. 